In this video, I will demonstrate a few examples of solving problems that involve constant acceleration in one dimension. In a previous video, I have derived the kinematic equations for constant acceleration. The derivation depended on a trick using average velocity that is only usable if constant acceleration is present. Without knowing that your problem involves constant acceleration, you cannot use these equations and you must return to basic definitions. The equations are a combination of the variables for time, position, velocity, and acceleration. While all of these equations involve the acceleration and initial velocity, only some of them include final velocity, displacement, or time. These equations can be adapted for use in freefall problems where the acceleration is known to be downwards with a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. Here are the steps you should take when solving such kinematic problems. Read the problem and look for clues on variables of time, position, velocity, and acceleration. Some variables may not be given numerically, rather there will be verbal cues for them. With so many variables to keep track of, you should draw a diagram and declare your coordinate system. Look at your list of kinematic equations and look for one that involves the unknown variable you are trying to solve for. Narrow down your selection of equation based on what other variables are given. Solve the equation for the unknown and plug in with units. Don't forget to go back and reread the problem, making sure you have an answer to all questions asked. The first example asks you to calculate the acceleration of a runner based on other quantities. Read the problem for the kinematic variables and draw the picture to keep track of them. Define your coordinate system.
highlight what is being asked for. Look at your list of kinematic equations and see which ones include the unknown. In this example, all of the equations involve acceleration. So instead, we narrow down our selection based on other given variables. In this example, we do not know the final velocity. What we do know, the displacement, the initial velocity, and time. We solve the equation for the unknown. and plug in with units. Don't forget to reread the question above, making sure you had answered it sensibly. In the second example, we are asked to find the stopping distance of a car driving at 36 meters per second, which is about 80 miles per hour. We draw the picture to keep track of known variables and declare our coordinate system. We look at the list of kinematic equations for constant acceleration. And highlight which ones include the unknown variable. We narrow down our selection based on what is given in the problem. Solve that equation for the unknown. And plug in with units. Look back at the picture and reread the question to make sure you have answered it. The third example involves the free fall of a dropped ball. This time, we draw the picture in the vertical direction. For problems involving free fall, we commonly declare the coordinate system as positive y upward. This time, we look at the kinematic equations for free fall. We check which equation involves our unknown. And select the one that we have the most information for.
we algebraically solve the equation. Then plug in with units. Reread the problem to make sure you have answered all the questions. The final example has a ball thrown straight up and reaching maximum height. When reading this problem, we highlight maximum height as well because it is code for vertical velocity being zero there. We draw the picture and declare our coordinate system. This time we highlight that there are two unknowns we need to solve for. The first unknown is initial velocity which is found in all of the free fall equations. So instead, we pick our equation based on what else is given. We solve for the unknown and plug in with units. We round the answer down to two significant digits at the end. Now that we have initial velocity, we can update our kinematic equations to select one for the other unknown time. As before, once you get an answer, reread the problem to make sure you had answered all questions.